So here's what you're going to do. You uh, add your song or go to the song that you, you want to add the chord charts to. And you notice there's no, there's nothing in here yet. It's, it's all empty. Um, so I'll go and I'll copy uh, the file from, here's, here's the file that I'm copying over. This has all the lyrics and chords in it. And so um, I'm going to go into lyrics and chords. Paste it into there. Um, then I'm going to change the format on this because I like it to be in the Arial and in the two column setting. Um, this is typically 12 points, but for this song I know it needs to be 11 because it's just it's a bigger one. This has, I, I like to keep all this in my arrangement file here. So this is the sequence and I'll just go ahead and create that sequence now. So we have the intro, verse, chorus, Instrumental, verse 2, chorus, instrumental 2, bridge, and there is no down chorus, so I need to add down chorus, chorus, there we go, add that, chorus, and outro. Boom, 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 boom. That's done. Okay, so that's in here like this. I know it's 138.44, so I'm going to take those things out. And I'll update the information here in a second. And so I have put, um, you'll notice I have put a column break here. So the, le the left hand side is um, the editing side. The right hand side is what it's going to look like. It's a preview side. So I can see exactly where everything's going to line up. You'll also notice this, this um, uh, formatting is kind of odd. So you have Chords have to be in brackets to be seen as chords. And so you notice like that is right on top of ground. Um, if I wanted to put it at the end of ground, I could just do this and go GRO and then UND. And it'll update here and now I see it now it's at the end. Which that's not where I want it. So I'll take that out. I'll put it back where it was. Oops. And there it is. The cool thing about that is that, you know, this A minor fits just right, but maybe th if this was an F sharp minor, it might be different, like if you're going into a different key or whatever. So having it in, in just the right spot, it makes it the formatting perfect for when you're going to transpose, which is, to me, the biggest benefit of using this system. So I'm going to go back um, into the thing, into the main main thing. Now you notice it's already added this. I'm going to add this here. BPM is 138 and it's in 44. So if I go to click on this to preview it, it comes up and this is all, it's all in there now, just like I want to see it. Now here's the coolest part. So let's say I don't want to play this in the shape of C. Let's say I want to play it in, in a G shape. So I go up here and edit it. And I'm going to add an alternate key. It's going to automatically tell me the closest one, but I'm going to say, no, I actually want it to look like G. And watch this. I hit G, and it tells me where I need to capo. You don't even have to be smart. <laughs> Just kidding. You don't, you don't even have to know a theory. So I hit save, and that fast. Did you see how fast that appeared? Here it is, and it's going to tell me capo 5 in G. And here's the song. Now I'm in G. Now we're going to sound the same. Same thing goes if I want to add a key. Let's say I want to play it in, in B flat. C is too high, let's go down to B flat. And right away, I'm not, I'm not going to play in B flat, that's ridiculous. I play everything in G, right, because I'm a guitar player. So I put it in G, and it tells me, oh, that's going to be capo 3. I click save, and just that fast, here it is, in B flat, and then that in, in the capo key, capo chart in G. With the capo 3, the instructions, it's all in there. It's so easy, it's ridiculous. I cannot imagine not doing it. And so I didn't. I actually am doing it.